Oh. Anyways, man. Anyways. We're back. We're, we're back, guys. We're going to do an earlier review because you know, today was my last day of university. And I'm going to be doing a much earlier review of SmackDown Live this week. I really don't get the road to stomping ground. I feel like the road to stomping ground has probably been one of the most bumpiest roads ever. The fact that the fact that one that, that the fact that we've got four matches on the card that are rematches I will definitely say I'm actually quite happy that some of the other matches that the other matches that they have put up do not contain rematches. So, like I said, you've got Roman and Drew, Becky and Lacey, Rollins and Rollins and Corbin, and Kofi and Ziggler. Their rematches, their rematches, and you've got other matches like Bliss and Bailey, which makes no sense. Then you have bloody New Day versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. By the way, didn't I say I uh, didn't I predict that this that this match was going to be at stopping ground? Big E and Xavier Woods versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I don't know why. I just I don't know why, man. I just had a feeling they're going to go that route. You got Brian and Rowan versus the Heavy Machinery and. We got a triple threat match for the Cruiserweight title. I'll go more over on that in my predictions video. But all I'll say is, is that outside of the the boring rematches, and with the new fresh matches that they're giving us, Stomping Ground doesn't look that bad on paper. Despite the fact it's called rematch grounds. But anyway, let's get on with it. We got Dolph Ziggler cutting another promo. On Kofi Kingston. You know, I really don't care. I really do like... I, I do like Ziggler's promos. But I just don't care at the end of the day. He's just there to put over Kofi Kingston. And continue Kofi Kingston's run as WWE Champion. Dolph Ziggler took on Xavier Woods. He defeated Xavier Woods. Chaos broke out during Moment of Bliss. I really couldn't care less about this. Despite the fact that I'm a big Alexa Bliss fan, I really did not care about this. I just didn't. Apollo Crews was backstage with Selena Vega looking for Andrade. And I'm surprised Andrade is back so soon. I expected Andrade to take a much longer time off. So I guess we could see Charlotte again very soon. I kind of said they'll probably be gone for maybe about a couple of weeks. But I think they should have been gone a little bit longer. But it is what it is with WWE. Andrade attacked Apollo Crews. I did like that Zelina Vega was like, oh, I did like the one line that Vega said that Apollo Crews is trying to flirt with her. I thought that was pretty funny. Hey, listen, I would not flirt with Andrade. I would definitely would not flirt with Zelina Vega. Knowing full well that Alistair Black will be right behind me and giving me a black mass. In real life. Real, real life matters, not storyline what we've got here. And we had the Heavy Machinery take on the B Team. Heavy Machinery won that. I'm very happy for the B Team. Then we had a backstage segment, man. We had a backstage segment with the Iconics. Uh, AOP were backstage. And the Iconics confronted, well, didn't confront, they were walking down the hallway, and Oscar and Kyrie Sane happened to be there. You know what I find funny? When the Iconics appeared on TV, crowd popped. The crowd popped. You know, yeah, you know, cheering when the Iconics appeared on TV. And then. And yeah, obviously, Kyrie Sane and Oscar and Paige got a louder reaction. Got a louder reaction. S 
so so right here's the thing right people like to talk about how the iconics are cringe and but and and no they were not cringe at all backstage in this little segment the ones who were cringe were freaking Oscar, Kyrie Sane, and Paige. When Paige announced, even though she's not GM anymore, apparently she's just allowed to just announce things. She's not GM anymore, but here she is, just allowed to announce something. She just goes ahead and says that, oh, if Oscar and Kyrie Sane beat you, beat you next week, they get a title shot, and it will be iconic. They, yeah, they did the little icon. They did the iconic's little pose, and holy cow, that was cringe as hell. Paige was cringe. Oscar was cringe. Kyrie was cringe. All three of them were cringe. In that sentence, I could. I just wanted to block my ears when I heard those three impersonate the iconic's. Absolute trash, man. Absolute trash. And these are the pe and these are the girls that people want to see. Trash and cringe. Shane McMahon sucks up more airtime, and the Miz comes out, and the Miz, you know, puts the blame on himself for creating Shane McMahon, the monster, and he vows to put an end to his ego. Miz. You had ego yourself. Miz, you, you were... You were... You want to talk about ego, Miz? You, you were the biggest man with the biggest ego ever. Now, I agree. Shane McMahon has a friggin' ego. But Miz is questioning Shane with his ego? Sh Miz's ego was out of control when he was, went out of control as, as well. He loved being in the spotlight. Every time the spotlight would get taken away from the Miz, he'd get angry. Every time he'd lose a title. But either way, Shane McMahon makes a, makes a tag team match with the Miz, but only if he can find a partner in 10 seconds. And he, did, and he finds his partner. He finds our truth Drew McIntyre and Elias defeat our truth and the Miz. Our truth ends up losing his 24-7 championship to Drake Maverick. Now, I'm I'm glad about this because I feel like they've done everything possible. I feel like they've done everything possible now with our truth. I don't really think they could have done more with our truth as the 24-7 champion. So, taking the title off our truth you know, I like our truth I really enjoyed his time as the 24-7 champion, but I'm actually very glad. But I'm actually very glad they took it off him and gave somebody else an opportunity with that thing. So yeah, Seth Rollins was also on SmackDown Live. Yeah, Seth Rollins' first appearance as a wild card. Unbelievable, man. He appeared on SmackDown doing his doing the same old thing swinging chairs at everyone who swinging chairs at people because they want to be the referee for Baron Corbin's match anyone who sides with Baron Corbin's going to get a steel chair shot B team copped it copped this chair shot because they tried to become uh, they, they tried to become referee Shelton Benjamin was backstage as well I really don't bloody get the, get that, man. That's how Sheldon Benjamin's going to get on TV. The fact that he's in a backstage segment looking to become a referee. I bet, I, I bet a lot of us probably forgot that Sheldon Benjamin was actually on television. More importantly, we probably forgot that this guy was even still under contract with the WWE. I was so excited when Sheldon Benjamin came back to the WWE. But they've done nothing with this guy since he came back. We had another two out of three falls match. We had Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston teaming up against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Of course. 
Of course, Sami Zayn, a freaking wild card. Predictable. Freaking hell, man. It's a freaking hell, man. It's not a wild card rule. It's a we know who's going to be on TV rule. We know who's going to come over to the other brand rule. It's downright disgusting. It's downright disgusting that we that we get to see that we see the same damn people every wild card. Same people. Every wild card. It's the same people. Yes, yeah, Seth Rollins is different. The Miz is always a wild card. Sammy's always a wild card. Roman's always a wild card for Raw. The New Day are, are sometimes a wild card for Raw. We see the exact same people all the time. It's not a wild card if it's the same people. A wild card is a Buddy Murphy appearing on Raw. A wild card if someone different, like like I said, like a Buddy Murphy. Where is he? Where is Buddy Murphy? How come that guy hasn't had his debut match yet? I more hate this wild card rule than anything else. It's, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. So Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston defeat the 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 defeat Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Who cares, man? Who the hell cares? Uh, I am I, I I am so done with this bullshit, man. It, it's ridiculous. I am over this wild card rule. I've been over this wild card rule for a long time now, and you guys know how I feel about this freaking wild card rule. It's downright it's downright stupid and it's downright dumb. It is not necessary to have. If this wild card rule is not gone by October. When SmackDown goes to Fox, I'm going to get even more angry than I am right now with the wildcard rule. So anyway guys, that is going to be your review. Hope you guys liked it. Hit that thumbs up. Comment down below your thoughts on SmackDown. And I'll see you all when I do my when I do my stomping grounds predictions. And I'll see you guys when, when I do more live streams. See you then, guys.